Okay, let's work this example. In this case, we have a jogger running in a circular track. And he or she was observed running at an angular velocity, which is a very strange unit for people running in tracks, but anyway, 1.20 radians per second. Three seconds later, he was observed running at a lower angular velocity, 1.8 radians per second. What is his acceleration during the three seconds? Okay, so here, it's a kinematics problem. We have an initial velocity, a final velocity, and a time. We go back, definition, or the equation for velocity, omega is equal omega naught or omega zero plus alpha t. So we write that down. Omega is equal to omega zero plus alpha t. So omega zero is my initial omega, which is 1.8 radians per second in this case. Alpha is what we are looking for. T is three seconds. And omega final, Actually, I made the mistake here. Omega final is 1.8 radians per second. And omega initial is the 1.2 radians per second. Okay, so we plug them in. 1.8 radians per second is equal 1.2 radians per second plus alpha times 3.0 seconds. So move this to the other side. So we're left with 0.6 radians per second is equal to alpha times 3 seconds. And alpha is just 0.6 over 3, so 0.2 radians per second squared. And that's my answer for part A. Now the second question is what is the angular displacement during these three seconds? In this case we are looking for the displacement. So we are looking to use this equation. If we know everything for it, we know the initial velocity, initial position, we take it as zero if we are finding the displacement. Now we know the acceleration, we know the time, so we should be able to just use it. Omega is omega naught plus one half of alpha t squared plus omega zero t. So in this case, it's going to be zero plus one half 0.2 radian per second squared times 3 seconds squared plus 1.2 radians per second times 3 seconds. So in this case, that would be 0 plus 1 half of 0.2 radian per second squared times 9 second squared plus 1.2 times 3 so that gives us 3.6 radian the seconds cancel the seconds so it will be left with radians and we have 9 times 0.2 that would give uh, and divided by 2 that would give us 0.9 and then radians per second squared times second squared that gives us radians plus 3.6 radians. So it is 4.5 uh, radians. Okay, let's work this other example. An engine reaches a speed of 50 rotations per minute, or RPMs, in two seconds. What is the angular acceleration in radians per second squared? 
So here they didn't explicitly say it, but the engine is going to reach it from rest. So our initial velocity is zero. Our final velocity is 50 rotations per minute. And our time is two seconds. Now, since they want the answer in radian per second squared, I need to change this to radians per second. So to do that, 50 rotations per minute. So I multiply it by my conversion factor. So to get rid of the rotation, I need rotation in the denominator. One rotation is 2 pi radians. We'll get into that a little later, but that's the conversion factor. And then minute. I need to get rid of it in the denominator, so I multiply by minutes in the numerator, and that's 60 seconds. So radians, I mean rotations, will cancel the rotations, and the minute will cancel minute, and we are left with 50 times 2 pi, which is going to be 100 pi over 60 radians, per second. Now 100 pi, that's 10 pi over 6, which is 31.4 over 6 radians per second. And we can calculate that, express it in decimal terms if we want, 5.23 radians per second. Now to find my acceleration, acceleration is just change in velocity over time. In this case, that's going to be 5.23 radians per second minus 0 over 2 seconds, which is just 5.23 over 2, which is 2.6 radians per second square. That's my answer.